In this lesson we are going to look at TOP. You have already seen TOP in RHCSA, but uh, I want to cover it again, because you really need to understand uh, what it is all about. TOP is showing information about the TOP active processes. So let's pick out some elements. To start with, there is the load average. Now what is load average? The load average is the average amount of processes uh, that are in a runnable state. A runnable state means that the process is currently active or that it is waiting to be served by the CPU. You see three different figures. The first one is the average for the last minute, then we have the average for the last five minutes, then we have the average for the last 15 minutes. So you can see that right now this machine is doing nothing at all, but on average for the last 15 minutes it has been doing something. Now what does it mean 0.05? Well, that's 0.05 processes. And this figure relates to the number of CPUs that you've got in your system. On the third line, we see the, uh, the figures for all CPUs. If you press 1 from top, then you can see a line for every single CPU in this system. So here you can see that CPU is zero and that means that we have one CPU only. And that means that the maximum load average that your system theoretically can support is 1.00. If you have anything going over 1.00 in the load average, then potentially you're in trouble. It doesn't mean automatically that you're in trouble because of the way how processes are doing their work. A process may be in a blocking state which means that it is runnable, but that it is waiting for something else. And that's perfectly legal, and that can lead to a situation where your load average is 4, and you still have one CPU only, and you don't uh, suffer any performance problems. So that is why load average is a nice indication, but you should always further analyze. The second line is about tasks. Just in general, you should know uh, what is typical workload for your server. So we have one running task on this machine, 181 sleeping tasks. A sleeping task is using memory resources, but it's not doing anything. Now we have a stopped task. A task is in a stopped state if you have used Ctrl Z to stop it. Uh, that is what you would do before uh, backgrounding it with the BG command or foregrounding it with the FG command. And then we have the zombies. Zombie is something specific uh, and that's something that you don't want to have. So we have zero zombies, which is good. Now let's talk about the CPUs line. There's a few important parameters. Not all of the parameters are uh, evenly important. So we have 1.7 US. That's the load in user space. And that is processes that have been started by users. Then we have 0.3 in SY, which is the load in system space. This is typically kernel space processes like uh, driver interaction. Typically you should see a higher load in user space than in system space, but it all depends on the way how your server is configured and dealing with its work. The other important parameter is WA. WA means waiting for I.O. And this is a parameter that should be relatively low. On a busy server where lots of writes are happening, uh, you can see this figure increasing to an average of about 30%. Uh, you shouldn't go beyond an average of 30%. So if you see 80% for the wait state, then definitely there's some optimization to be done. Next we have the memory information. So we have information about memory, we have information about swap. Just to make it clear, these three figures are about swap and the rest of it is about memory. So we have about a gigabyte of RAM in total. And of this gigabyte in RAM, there is uh, 83 megabytes approximately is available. And we can see that 531 uh, megabytes is used by anything. Now if you look a little bit further, then you can see that of all the memory that is currently not available, we have a lot of memory in buffers and in cache. Cache is a very important mechanism for a Linux server. If your server reads a file, it will store the file in memory, in the area that we call cache. 
and by storing the file in cache, the next time that the file is accessed, it can be served faster. And that is why Linux servers typically use all memory that they don't need for anything else uh, for caching. Caching is good and you should see on average about 30% of memory being free or used by buffers and cache. It may be more, it should not be much less. And then we have available memory. Now this is interesting. What is the difference between available memory and free memory? Well, that's easy to understand. In buffers and cache, you may have memory pages that have been sitting there for a long time and haven't been doing anything. That is memory that can be cleared instantaneously by the Linux kernel. So the Linux kernel looks at the current usage of buffers and cache and is looking at uh, memory that's not really doing anything and that memory is considered available memory as well. So from this parameter you should say, oh, I cannot load a 100 megabyte uh, program. Uh, from this parameter you can see the reality. So this 258 uh, is all cache that can be wiped plus the free memory. And then we have swap. The Linux kernel is very efficient regarding swap. Uh, it is swapping data that is allocated by programs but not really used. The Linux kernel tries to avoid a situation where your swap is being used very actively. Because if you keep on moving memory pages in and out of swap, that is going to have negative impact to performance. And that is why the Linux kernel is only uh, putting inactive memory in swap at first. But if you have memory pressure, which means a shortage of memory, then active memory pages will be put in swap as well and that is bad for your performance. Uh, we'll see in IO stat uh, how you can monitor that. So next we can see all the process activity. Processes are sorted by CPU activity. So the process that has the highest CPU load is listed first. And you can see that uh, this changes every five seconds. By default, top is polling every five seconds and displaying uh, what is happening on your system. So let's do a quick overview of what we see. Percentage CPU is the CPU load, percentage memory is the memory load. Uh, if you want to sort on something else than CPU load, you can use the greater than and the smaller than sign. If I press the greater than sign uh, one time, uh, that means let's go to the right. So it sorts on memory load. And you can see that GNOME shell is listed first and evolution calendar is listed uh, second. These are the most memory intensive processes. Now that we have sorted on memory load, let's start with virtual memory. In virtual memory we see the amount of kilobytes currently allocated by a program. Virtual memory is something special in Linux. Virtual memory is memory that doesn't exist. Linux works with a total amount of 32 terabytes of virtual memory, which allows processes to make a unique reservation within virtual memory. So this is what the process potentially may be using. Resident memory is what the process really is using. So this is 169 megabytes of memory that is really being used. Uh, so you need physical RAM or optionally, but better not, swap uh, in order to accommodate that. And then we have shared memory. These are libraries and related files that are shared with other processes. So this allows you to have good insight in memory usage uh, of processes. Now what else do we see? We see the PID, we see the user ID that was started, we see the priority and the nice value. Uh, you'll learn about that in RHCSA. And we see the time uh, that the process has been active. Which is interesting because if you sort on time by clicking uh, greater than one more, you can see that GNOME shell is the most active process on this system. And XORG, the graphical interface, is the second active process. Now from top, you can also add and remove display fields by, pr by pressing F. This is showing all the available display fields. So uh, you can see the fields that are currently displayed and from here you can add new fields. Uh, we can for example select uh, P for the last used CPU. 
or we can use the major page folds. And you can select anything you want. Just highlight uh, the item using the arrow keys and express the spacebar on your computer if you're happy with that. And uh, once you've done that, you can press Q and you can see that the new columns have been added. Now if we quit top and we start it again, you can see that the new columns uh, were forgotten. If you want to make that persistent, uh, press F for fields again. Select the field that you want to add. Use Q to quit and use W to write the information uh, to a file with the name .topRC. This file is written to the home directory of the current user and the next time that top is started it will read the file, uh, read the settings and it will make sure that you can work from the same interface again. In RHCSA you have already learned how you can use K to kill processes from the top interface and how you can use uh, R to re-nice processes uh, so that you change the priority. So I'm not going to cover that again. Uh, this is what you need to know about top. The important thing about top is that it's like a dashboard. If you analyze a server that has performance problems, just start analyzing top. Interpret what top is showing you and you will find what you need to optimize. And from there you can use specialized utilities to figure out what exactly is happening.